Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Susan McGuire, Director of Professional Development at ACCE. We're really happy to have you with us on this webinar today, led by Gina Martens of the Greater Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. Uh, as you know, non due sources of revenue have become increasingly significant to chambers, and these trends have only become more significant in our COVID world. Uh, Gina is going to provide some advice on the nuts and bolts of selling advertising, sponsorships, services, um, and other insights into innovative ways to create value for prospective members and strategies for selling your chamber's mission. Um, so before we get started, I just have a few housekeeping reminders. First, attendees are in listen-only mode during the webinar to avoid background noise. Second, after the presentation, we'll have time for questions which you can ask by using the question function of the webinar. The question box is on the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Just type in your question and I will read the question to Gina. Um, if we run out of time and don't get to your question, we will reach out to you. And you also have the option of contacting Gina directly. She has her contact information right here on her first slide. Um, and uh, you can contact her if you have anything that you'd like to discuss with her um, after the webinar. Um, the uh, presentation slides are also downloaded, or excuse me, are uploaded to the webinar panel, mm -hmm. and you may download them. Um, so just take a look at the box labeled handouts and click to download. We're going to be posting um, those documents along with the webinar recording after this webinar and they should be up by tomorrow um, or at the latest Monday, October 19th. So I'll go ahead and introduce our speaker. Uh, Gina Martens is the Senior Vice President of Member Relations and Sales for the Greater Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. In this role, she serves more than 5,000 members and delivers value through superior benefits and the opportunity for members to engage and connect with other businesses. Gina is an ACCE Membership Development Division Advisory Board member, and she also serves as a sales mentor in our sales mentorship program here at ACCE. Um, in our annual sales contest, she consistently ranks in the top three in membership sales achievement with chambers of similar size. So we're really lucky to have Gina with, he with us here today uh, to share her insights. And at this point, Gina, I'm going to pass the presentation over to you. Susan, thank you. And hello and good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. And honestly, I'm sure many of you on today's call could probably teach uh, this program today. So I'll be anxious to hear your ideas, your thoughts, uh, your questions later on in the program uh, and learn from you as well. Um, a bit about our chamber, we're 5,000 members strong. We have 32 staff that, uh, you know, I always like to say excel in their respective areas uh, of what they do for our chamber. And we have 33 chambers, councils, and committees within our greater Lehigh Valley footprint. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how those councils and committees and chambers play a part in uh, your mission and selling your chamber later on in the program. So before we kick things off, I wanna roll a short video. Thanks so much, let's kick things off. And I wanna do a little recap of last month's session. For those of you who are fortunate to be on the call, Debbie Mrazek with the sales company gave us some incredible advice uh, to begin our sales journey. Uh, what we learned from her is she wanted us to show up every day with a positive attitude. She gave us some advice on how to manage our sales time, right? Our pipeline, our funnels, our leads. How are we, are we managing those and bringing them to close? Uh, she taught us how to know our worth and most of all hope is not a strategy and I love that uh, if it's not working let it go hopefully we'll learn some things today that will work for your chamber in terms of revenue uh, but if it's not working let it go and move on uh, have a member communication plan and I love this I think it's so important you know how are you paying attention to your current members how are you showing appreciation communicating with them and sharing the value you bring and that's going to play a role in your revenue success so that was very good and most of all always be genuine always be caring and make it a relationship and a conversation that never ends um, and that's also going to take us into this next session so it's been a wild seven months let's face it uh it hasn't been easy um and much about 
what we're going to talk about today is really not a result of shifting or pivoting. Nandu's revenue has been here all along. Sure, you might have a new sales, sales structure or game plan as it relates to how you're going to spend your sales time, but Nandu's revenue is here to stay and should be a part of your everyday sales plan, strategy, and conversations. Uh, and through the years at our chamber, we've been less dependent on fair share membership dues and more focused on value and what members are looking for. We made that shift long before COVID, spending our sales time developing and seeking new strategic partnerships, new event ideas, and more marketing opportunities to benefit our members. And remember that uh, tiered dues, right? We heard so much about tiered dues years ago uh, through ACCE and, and, and other uh, learning areas. Um, and that tiered dues really does play a part here. So fast forward to today, it is very likely that your chamber membership dues has fallen off a little bit. I know at our chamber, our new membership dues is about 50% of what it normally is. Our retention remains stabilized and our retention, you know, is on average 87 to 89%, which is very good. But honestly, 70% of that money is coming in, right? So we're very lenient. We're stretching out times. You know, we're letting members go beyond that 90 days that it would take them to typically pay. So from a cash flow standpoint, it can be rough uh, for chambers, right? So think about how are we going to replace that membership dues deficit? Um, so as you're rethinking your revenue streams, you may also want to look at rethinking your sales structure in this changing world. And as a membership sales professional, you could shift the focus and spend time selling other things. Um, you're having direct conversations with members. You're understanding what their needs and what they value. And then how can you incorporate selling other things into those very same conversations? And you can easily package and bundle based on what you know about that member and what their needs are. And in our chamber, we have an everybody sells mindset. Our staff can sell all opportunities, and that's our entire staff of 32. Uh, it encourages them, encourages them to be entrepreneurial, and also it empowers them, right? They want to go out and build their own relationships. Uh, they want to build their own trust, their own rapport, um, but also run with an idea and take that risk. Our president and CEO, Tony Ionelli, is always, always encouraging us, take a risk. If it doesn't work, what did we say in the last slide? You're gonna, we're just gonna move on from that, but take the risk and see what happens. So these are the revenue streams we're gonna take a look at today. Um, and many of these, like I said, can be part of the existing conversations you're already having. Sponsorships is probably the biggest piece of non-dues revenue for all of us. Uh, but whether that means your existing events, those rescheduled events and any new event ideas, we'll explore that a little bit. We're gonna look at those marketing opportunities as Susan mentioned with digital print and website and where I think you can have immediate impact, right? These are some things that can produce real dollars within the next two to three months. Uh, smarketing and how are we using existing data to grow our revenue? I am a data geek and I am in our website, uh, or excuse me, our database 24 seven. And we'll talk about some of that. Uh, selling our mission, our mission was strategic partnership funding. And I have a DEI initiative that I'm going to share with you. And also our contract support for services. You know, where in our communities are you building relationships to go out and find uh, and run programs? Um, and we'll talk about some of those ideas as well. So let's look at some sponsorship opportunities first. Look, we've all been there. We are all, you know, scrambling since March to reposition events, um, you know, reinvent events, uh, to take events to a new level. But let's look at an event that you've had to uh, just re, uh, you know, move um, and, and then call each and every sponsor and ask for their continued sponsorship support for this now virtual program, right? So it's like, okay, we're not getting all of those in-person elements that we used to have. So how are you repositioning that event to your sponsors? And, you know, we've had plenty of conversations at our chamber, and as I'm sure you have had too. Um, you know, so you have to, with every sponsor, with every event, I don't believe it's a one-size-fits-all thing. I think it's um, every sponsor might want something different and every level of sponsorship might might want something different, right? Your pro platinum and presenting sponsors 
you know, you might have to give a little bit, but, you know, I think it's important that you always consider that replacement value uh, for that rescheduled event. And, and, and that might look a little different each and every time. You've reimagined programs. Um, I'm going to share some examples of some things that we've done. Um, you've come up with innovative new ideas to drive that value and revenue. Uh, we'll talk about that. And then, of course, what's been relevant, right? And so what events can you put together uh, very, you know, maybe quickly over the next you know, month or you have done uh, that are relevant to the time? And I use this example of debates and other forums because uh, we have been we had two very successful. Uh, we had a congressional debate two weeks ago uh, that generated some, some nice sponsorship revenue. Uh, we had a U.S. Um, uh, congressman uh, at, here with us. We did like a business roundtable that brought in sponsorship revenue. So sometimes, you know, based on the time, it's an election year, you could benefit from some of those things. Um, but just looking at some of those um, different event ideas, um, you know, we've had sponsors say, you know, our annual meeting is coming up. So we're, we've taken that annual event experience, which is a big wow factor for us, 1,300 people, uh, big stage production, sound lights, you name it. And we've taken that now to a virtual experience. And so how are we talking that through with our sponsors? And one of the things we're looking at and we've done this year is we're getting two years worth of sponsor uh, revenue for this event. So sponsors are saying, hey, look, I'll pay you two years worth of this sponsorship, maybe I can get a little discount. So if they paid, you know, maybe a $7,500 sponsorship, two years would have been 15,000. They're coming out to us and saying, hey, we'll give you 12,000 now for two years worth of sponsorship. So some of those to have conversations have been great for us and it's been great from a cash flow perspective. So we've been creative there. Um, you know, in terms of, of event styles, like we have an annual Excellence in Business Award. Well, we are, excuse me, Excellence in Business event where we honor excellence in business in, in all different uh, business categories. Well, we've transitioned that event. It's still happening. It's virtual, but now it's a perseverance event, right? So how is how have your businesses persevered through this you know, pandemic and how can we honor the work you're doing there? So, you know, kind of a, a little change up uh, for that event. We uh, had a great meeting with a local bank uh, and they we learned from that meeting that they want to do some financial literacy uh, webinars and seminars. So we were able to turn that into a $5,000 sponsorship uh, for generating some quick turnkey webinars that will literally happen over the next four weeks. Um, and it's and it's a program that they already have in and created that we were able to just market and sell um, and have them as the uh, title and presenting sponsor. You know, so again, listening to your customers, listening to your sponsors, understanding what they value and being able to turn around and generate that as, a, as a, an event that generates real dollars. Um, and uh, I have another example of an event that I wanna share. This is our Women's Summit. So our Women's Summit is the biggest one day women's event we do all year, typically in June with 600 women. Uh, and uh, it is a fantastic event. We had such great um, speakers lined up this year. Soledad O'Brien is one. I'm sure that's a name many of you recognize. Uh, so excited for this year's event. We actually postponed it to make it a live event and then realized how crazy are we? This is not going to be a live event. So now it is a virtual event. It is happening um, next week. But um, one of the interesting, so, you know, this is a perfect example of us having to call every sponsor that was already scheduled to go in June and say, will you continue and support and sponsor us in this new virtual program? And every single one has said yes. But I highlighted just a couple of the things that we had to change up, right? So um, what we did is Soledad agreed to do a, um, a special meet and greet via Zoom with our VIP and top sponsors. So we were able to incorporate that Zoom and feel that those sponsors got that one-on-one -on -one time with Soledad to be able to ask her questions and really get to know her a little bit better. That was a huge wow. And I think that really helped us maintain the level of sponsorships that we did. Um, we incorporated a virtual goodie bag um, uh, piece to this program. And then we, we invested in a virtual expo um, program uh, technology. 
and we're having a virtual expo uh, section and you're able to log in and, and visit um, all of our exhibitors throughout the day, throughout the, you know, the Women's Summit program. So just a couple of little twists that we were able to incorporate to, to move this, you know, in-person phenomenal event to this now virtual platform. Um, I also wanted to highlight our State of the City breakfast. It already happened. It was fantastic. This event would have been April. Uh, we moved it now to September. Uh, and I'll be honest, our Mayor Panto in Easton, he would have absolutely shown up anytime we needed him to. Uh, but uh, we decided to, to make it a virtual program. And I did highlight into the, if you see what you get for your $2,000 sponsorship, we incorporate, it's typically a breakfast, it's Lafayette College in Easton hosts us. They do a phenomenal job with breakfast. But in the absence of breakfast, we said, well, what do we do for a meal? So, you know, and I'm sure many chambers are already doing this, but when you, when you go out and seek gift cards to restaurants, you know, that you're actually going to give restaurants money and purchase gift cards and turn those gift cards then uh, to your sponsors. It's generating cash for your restaurants who so desperately need us right now. I think partnering with a restaurant is a win-win, right? So um, anytime we can incorporate meals with gift cards, we do it. And I'll be honest, we do try to avoid those third parties, those Uber Eats and um, and, and those, those uh, you know, other third-party sites, Grubhub, because of, you know, 30% um, that it hits restaurants, you know, off the top in terms of, of their revenue. Um, so we try to go out and buy them directly and then pass along those gift cards to our members. So I wanted to share that. And then another event opportunity we had, and if anyone from the Lancaster Chamber is on the call, the Lancaster Chamber actually brought this idea to our chamber. But this is a total turnkey uh, new manager training academy. It's actually going to start next week. It's a nine session course, but it's also a revenue share for our chamber. So we have uh, someone great, a uh, new member who's going to present all of the content. Our chamber is just promoting it, and now it's a revenue share. So looking for opportunities like this, I think, are win-win uh, for your members. It's adding value and for your chamber as it adds revenue for each attendee. Right. Um, I think if, and, and I'm sure we'll have maybe, maybe questions on events or more event ideas later on in the program, and I look forward to hearing from you on that. Um, but I, I think, you know, my biggest advice for, um, before we jump to advertising on your events and your sponsorships, if you are ever going to be flexible, now is the time to be flexible. Customize, be flexible. I ask people all the time, especially new people that I'm getting to know, new businesses, new members, what is your budget? You know, what can we do together that helps you? We'll work within your budget. You know, so if there's any time to be flexible, the time is now. So um, let's look at a, um, a, an advertising opportunity with a membership directory. Maybe many chambers have a mem membership directory. Mem mem maybe many of you today are saying, oh my God, that is the most antiquated thing I've ever heard of. And I, I wouldn't blame you. However, I can tell you that our book generates close to $50,000 for our chamber every year. So we are in directory mode now, selling for 2021. It is a printed book. We'll print it in January. Um, you know, you if, if you think, well, a printed book is a little antiquated, you can add and be as creative as you want with the digital element, right? Anything you want to throw in that's going to appeal to the people you're trying to sell to. Um, and, and you always want to look at selling your covers first, right? So your inside front cover, your back cover, and your uh, inside back cover. Those three areas of your book will pay for your book. Everything else you sell internally is is a uh, profit. And so um, who are your potential advertisers in your directory? Hospitals are great. Colleges that have typically continuing ed, uh, those colleges that want to you know, promote their programs to your business professionals, IT, banking, attorneys, uh, insurance offices and companies. Those are ideal candidates um, for your, your membership directory. So um, this is something, you know, again, we're starting now for 2021. By the end of December, we will have all of our advertisers ready to go. Uh, we'll start the billing process and payments will likely be in by January. So it's something that you can implement now, today, very easily. And within three months, you know, have revenue. Now, I recognize that uh, pricing is going to vary, right? Because you're going to price 
you know, your worth on this based on your distribution, how many members are going to see it, all of that fancy stuff. And I get that. I'm happy to share our pricing structure and how we lay that out. Um, I can send it to Susan and Susan can get it out to everybody. But um, but it's a great opportunity, uh, honestly, for some additional revenue. And we're going to talk about contract uh, for services later on, but this is an area that we also contract for services. So we have a partner chamber um, 40 minutes from us north. Uh, it's our Pocono chamber. Now we are in partnership with them, but it is a separate chamber. They have a separate membership directory. They have separate books. Um, you know, they do their own events, but in partnership, they're able to attend our events at member pricing. And, you know, we kind of have a, a, a reciprocal uh, arrangement when it comes to that, they receive our newsletter in the mail. Um, but uh, they always outsourced their directory. And with that outsourced contract, I think all that came into their chamber was $10,000. And the, the, the third party company that took on their uh, directory sales got everything else. And then we came in and said, well, wait a minute, let us do that for you. So as a contract for service, our chamber was able to go out and sell their advertising. So now this is two books we've sold this year, <laughs> go out and sell their advertising. During the pandemic, we started their sales in March. And believe it or not, this pandemic hit and we're like, oh my God, how are we going to get to $50,000? We got to $50,000 with their um, ad sales. And, you know, we were creative as all heck, right? Throwing anything and everything we can in. And I will say that um, it was an opportunity for our chamber. Uh, I think out of the deal, we got $10,000. That was our, that was our uh, contract uh, revenue. And then their chamber got the rest of the ad revenue. Um, I will tell you too, without confusing you, when I first started at our chamber, I'm at our chamber nine years. When I first started, we outsourced our directory. And uh, finally, when we, you know, we started looking at the numbers, they said, well, what's our revenue? Well, our revenue was like maybe $7,000. And I was like, what? We could so do this. These sales conversations are a part of what we do every single day. And we took it on and never looked back. So it's, like I said, something very easy that you can do for your own chamber very quickly. Um, we also, I want to say, uh, we lay it out in-house. Um, we actually pay our staff to lay it out in-house as opposed to paying someone else. We do send it off to a printer and have it professionally printed and mailed out. Um, but, but everything else is done in-house. We use the InDesign program. Uh, and it's and it's been working really well. So wish me luck on this year, but you know I feel good about it, and um, you know our our goals are are good, um, and you know I'm just excited to to tackle it once again. We also have a newsletter connections uh, that is printed monthly, and every month, um, you know our goal is fourteen thousand dollars a month in ad sales, and. During the pandemic, we did we didn't print two months while people weren't at the office. Um, you know, we 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 had a digital version available. Um, there's always a digital version available, but this mailed copy and I have one right on my desk, but it goes to close to seven thousand people a month in the mail. Uh, so uh, we're pretty proud of it. Um, it's the way we promote our upcoming events, programs, but more importantly, members can promote their business in our uh, online or um, I'm sorry in our printed newsletter. So, you know, sometimes you think, well, how are we going to drive interest in ad sales, right? Those, you know, there are members who who um, do choose to advertise and for a full year, and we'll give them a special price on a 12 month, their ad is inconsistently. Those are beautiful. But many times we've had to come up with and create special sections, special intersections to drive interest and revenue. Um, in July, we did a special feature for our restaurants. Again, our restaurants are hurting. We said, let's help our restaurants. Let's do a special feature where we're listing all of our restaurant members, all of our restaurant weeks, really helping our restaurants shine. And then we went out and we and we looked for advertisers who would support that special section. Uh, just this past month, we did a home and office special feature with many people working from home and redesigning offices. And we pulled different segments. And we and we found a, you know a, maybe four thousand dollars in additional advertising with that special section. So special sections will have you continuously generate fresh I, uh, content for your readers. You always want to look at what else you can do, though. Um, you know, we we you know, if a member calls us and says, "Hey, I have a flyer insert. Can I put that in your newsletter?" Absolutely, there'll be a cost to it. Um, so if, if a member approaches us with an idea and, and we feel like we can run with it, 
will do it. And you always want to make sure you're adding that digital element, right? So there's, we let's face it, there's readers who are going to want to read it on your phone. Um, so our newsletter is always a digital copy that you can flip through on our website and our advertisers you can click right through to those advertisers so there is that digital value that um, the members um, value this is a special feature in our newsletter it's our featured business story now we didn't always do this this is something we dreamed up uh, one day saying hey how can we grow revenue? How can we shine the light on you know, the great things that businesses are doing, maybe some milestones and things that they have going on in their, in their work? So we created this featured business product and we said, hey, for $2,500, we'll come out, we'll interview you, we'll take pictures and we'll write a professional story. And we will feature you as our business of the month in our newsletter, digitally on our e-newsletter. And you know, there's a bunch of other inclusions that, that come along with it. And if they don't, want us to write it maybe they have someone on staff that can do it for two thousand dollars they can just give us the content and we'll share it but let me tell you people are not beating down our door to to be the featured business we go out we identify who we feel is is a perfect fit right based on milestones based on things we watch in the news and things that they have going on and we go out and we present this as an opportunity and it's really helped generate revenue so we're excited about this as well uh, and we have featured business stories lined up through february right now so we kind of and on a printed piece you tend to work further in uh you know in advance you don't have that short-term window um, as you do with anything digital and then of course our weekly e-newsletter now um obviously you know the the open rates have been very good during the pandemic i'm sure many chambers will agree uh people needed to stay close to the content we were putting out there as it related to resources and and other important uh benefits the chamber was doing for our members upcoming events and things um we were actually selling out we had two ad spaces a week we generate this email every tuesday every tuesday it goes to about 7500 emails uh we had two ad spaces we were selling them out and and i was like well let's add a third ad space and we were able to easily incorporate a third ad space um and now our potential is 1500 dollars a week uh in revenue for the weekly e-newsletter so if you're not already doing it i would encourage you to do it it's it's fun it's quick it's easy and the lead time for the this type of uh you know sale sometimes it's you know the week before they'll call hey do you have a space available and we'll try to to work it in for them and then of course our website uh and I, i'm going to say too and again i'm at our chamber nine years when i came to our chamber we outsourced website advertising and um the revenue was minimal and um you know it, it's it's unbelievable the work you can do, you know, when you take something on, you really learn um, how how easy it is to, to be able to navigate it and do it on your own. Again, especially with the current relationships that you already have. Um, but, but uh, you know, and I'll tell you, people are not beating down my door to say, hey, I wanna put my ad up on your website. These are deliberate, asks right we have to go out and seek we look at the industries that are the best fit to be on our website and we go out and we present to them what we can do for them to showcase right so our website right now 25,000 views per month um, we have ad packages that will fit any budget uh, we'll design ads for them many times people want to advertise they just don't have the know-how to create this pixel ad We'll do it. Um, and right now, our annual income from ad sales is roughly sixty thousand dollars. And when I first came, we were at like seven, eight thousand um, dollars. I do use Atlas Weblink. Uh, many chambers on the call might very well use it too. Um, I know they have uh, services where they'll sell your advertising. Um, and at a time, it, it worked for us, but now it works that we are out developing these relationships. And you know, keep in mind with any of this advertising. We never wanted this to be about a shift in um, uh, in money. So in other words, if a member uh, spends $20,000 a year in sponsorships, we never wanted to shift the focus away from the event sponsorship and now into um, you know these new opportunities. It was always about 
new money and new opportunities, right? So um, how can we, you know, when you're when you're sitting down and having your conversations with your members, um, you know, think about that and, and, right? So, um, you know, yes, you sponsor this and we're so grateful. And can, you know, can you bundle it anywhere else to really give them a full, well-rounded uh, positioning within your chamber? Um, so website advertising has been great. And, you know, we meet with our advertisers quarterly. We review analytics with them. We encourage them to change up their ads. Um, it's It's been a great process. The renewal has been, you know, very easy uh, for us in terms of the retention and the turnover. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty pleased with that, but I think that's something that you can easily generate as well. All right, and and then through social media, we have we you know we do campaign boosts. We'll we'll offer that to our members. Um, we have a podcast network. Many times we take current content and repurpose it for our podcast. Um, you know, I think COVID kind of you know threw a curveball into our uh, interview. We you know we actually have a podcast studio set up in our office right where I'm sitting right now. Uh, we invested in, in in great equipment, microphones and and things and you know put together this podcast network and then the pandemic hit, but we're able to repurpose, but more importantly, we're able to generate sponsor revenue with our podcast recordings. Um, and certainly, you know, we'll boost uh, on social media for folks. Um, you know, everything you know has a has a price. We'll work with your budget. And then what our CEO has been doing is these game changer interviews, which are phenomenal. And he'll meet and interview uh, a game changer in our community. And then we'll repurpose them as well for podcasts, for uh, YouTube, uh, and able to generate sponsorship revenue as well for each one of those uh, interviews. So that's something you can do, again, very easy, very quickly. All right, so so let's talk about you know aligning your sales and your marketing to improve revenue. And I love this. Seth Gooden said it best. Uh, you know, selling to people uh, who want to hear from you uh, is more effective than interrupting strangers who don't. And and I, and I just think this is so valuable. So how are you using your existing data to grow your revenues? And your existing data is who's showing up, right? Who's logging into your events? Who's requesting your e-newsletter? They want to hear from you if they're requesting your newsletter. Um, you know, are you opening up your communication to everybody, not just your members, but anybody and anybody who wants to see what you have going on? And I know early on in the pandemic, that was really important. You know, we looked at who was joining our PP. Uh, P webinars and our uh, SBA funding webinars and all of that need to know information that people so vitally uh, counted on the chamber for. You know, if you looked at who was attending that, so many non-members were a part of those conversations. And that's just gold for being able to, you know, pick up the phone, have a conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. What did you think? Um, let's stay in touch and, and really be able to have those conversations. So it's just so important for you, I think, in your uh, revenue success with all of this stuff to know who wants to hear from you. Um, and then what do your dashboard rep reports tell you? So for those Weblink Atlas users, I love the dashboard report in Atlas because it tells you your top 50, top 100, top 1,000 members. It breaks it down by revenue and it shows that dues and non-dues. And of course, you can go into each member one by one and see where you know where they're spending money and what they value. But it's a report that I um, I'm constantly referring. So use the reporting you have to help you now um, further along in this process. And um, you know, when we talk about new member investment packages, right, we'll go back to that tier dues, you know, what are your tier dues investments look like? I have an example of our top selling uh, membership investment. And remember, you're all membership sales professionals. You sell memberships for a living. You sell this $1,500 package and you have $1,000 in non-dues revenue right here, right? So if you think about your typical membership, maybe it would be $500 for a small business. Um, you know, maybe they're a new business. You've incorporated a ribbon cutting. Now you've encouraged them to put a digital ad out to promote their business. And uh, now they're going to have a printed ad in our newsletter for $400. So now that's a $1,500 executive level package that you've been able to, to sell and navigate. Keep in mind that our membership packages are totally custom customizable. I have a fancy chart with different levels of, of investment, but we will totally customize. So keep in mind, someone might not need a ribbon cutting, um, and we will gladly take that, that 
internal, uh, you know, again, because this is all internal, the, the member doesn't see where the money goes, right? But we know <laughs> for our uh, accounting savvy folks, you know, accounting wants to know where these line items go, right? So, um, you know, you can gladly take that $200 value for that ribbon cutting and move it to an event sponsorship and say, okay, if you don't need a, a ribbon cutting, what if we have you sponsor an event? Remember, you have all sponsorship levels within your uh, event, uh, you know, so, so where else can that money go? But I just wanted to share this because this $1,500 package, think about someone writing you a check because their dues, right? Their fair share dues is $1,500. So here you go. Here's my check. I may not renew next year, right? Because what kind of value did I see? Or could you give them a $1,500 pa $1, package with tons of value built in? So wanted to share that. And then we're going to, I think my time is okay. So now, um, you know, let's look at our mission. So I played that short video in the beginning. We use that video. We actually put together, you know, a, a nice letter that we included everywhere in the, the membership dues renewal invoices, uh, on our website, in in-person meetings with members. Um, but, you know, we use the video. The video is actually playing. There's commercials. You know, we have uh, radio, uh, I'm sorry, TV trade with a local company. And so those commercials that uh, we've been here on a long video you saw plays on TV. I, I'll watch Fox News and I'll watch and I'll see our, our, our commercial play, which is pretty cool. Um, but this is just a little bit about what the letter looks like, you know, now more than ever. But 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 more or less, we've been here all along. Right. And we outline everything we, we've been doing for our members uh, since this pandemic hit and why we need their support. So that's one area that we've been able to communicate. Um, another area is, you know, with diversity, equity, inclusion. And I know this is, uh, you know, big and, and, you know, probably in many chambers um, now uh, more than ever. Um, but the idea is, you know, let's face it, we were all scared. This pandemic hit and we were like, oh gosh, are we gonna be able to have events again? What if we don't have events? Will people continue to support us and sponsor us? Well, then you go to your mission, right? And so holding true to your mission, and we were able to put this collaborative together. And I can't take the, um, you know, the, the the credit for putting this collaborative together. This was our executive vice president of, of diversity, Danielle Joseph, and my colleague in sales, Allison Pickle, who put this collaborative together. But it's companies that buy into the mission of what diversity, equity, and inclusion are, right? So we did our homework. We know which companies, these Fortune 100 and 500 companies that we have in our backyard that support this, that have internal culture and programs within their own companies uh, for DEI. And we went out and we met with them and we talked about what our collaborative looks like. Um, so the councils you see here with African-American all the way down to young professionals, these are our diversity areas. And we have uh, councils, uh, committees, and groups that serve on the boards and support these initiatives for our chamber. And then this collaborative was created. Um, and so we went out and we said, well, for $30,000, will you support this collaborative uh, DEI initiative? And um, we might not have any events that support this collaborative, but we might, and we might have training programs and we might, but more importantly, it gave them a seat at the table and it gave them, uh, you know, a chance to uh, be involved with this important initiative. And I'm so proud to say that, you know, we've raised over a hundred thousand dollars in, uh, mission support for this DEI initiative. Uh, and it's only gonna grow from here. Uh, yes, these these groups will still have events, uh, many um, you know, important educational events, but um, it's an exciting time uh, for us to uh, be at the forefront of uh, DEI. And then I have, um, oh, I had one other, yeah, maybe that's at the end, sorry. Um, I did have, there we go. So this is a list of all of our councils within our chamber and each one of these areas generates revenue, has a unique mission, and then revenue supports and follows based on folks that uh, support that. Um, and they all have uh, staff liaisons, they have uh, events and programs and educational uh, learning initiatives within each of those areas. So the last thing I wanna touch on is your, 
you know, opportunities for council startups, for groups, and just overall community support. I think there's so many opportunities here that you can go out and seek, right? So whether it's a new business and diversity council that you want to start at your chamber, um, maybe it's a main street program. Maybe it's an area uh, with, a, with a main street that could use a little love. And maybe you go out and you pitch to that community um, that you'd like to start a main street program, you know, and maybe there's funding support for you there. We run several main street programs at our chamber in various communities in conjunction with uh, our boroughs our, and our city leaders. Um, and we have funding to be able to, to run and operate those programs. The contract for services that we talked about before I, you know, I would never think that our chamber would run a Halloween parade, but guess what? We run a Halloween parade. Now that Halloween parade is canceled this year, but a city approached us. They gave us a stipend to be able to run this parade and we go out and we run with it and we go out and we find uh, community business sponsors and we make it in an awesome community uh, day. Uh, and, and again, you know, we're very much a chamber of commerce as we are a chamber of communities. And we're going to go out and seek these opportunities. Um, actually, at Phillipsburg, New Jersey, we run Old Town Festival. Old Town Festival has been a part of that community for years. And we have a nice, um, you know, uh, investment from the, the town of Phillipsburg for us to go out and run this three-day festival. Uh, and and, and we, we, we tackle those as we tackle any event that we do, but it's a way to generate some extra income. Um, so I think, you know, that could be a project based if it's a if it's a festival or a parade or any type of event or a yearly commitment. Um, and then, of course, we have workforce initiatives and, and we have a close partnership with our workforce board. And, um, you know, there's a contract for services with workforce initiatives as well. So that concludes some ideas on non-dues revenue. Right. Well, thank you so much, Gina. <clears throat> Lots of great stuff there. Really appreciate it. Um, a lot to dig into. And we have a lot of questions. So I'm just going to start right in with them. Um, first, you had a couple questions on the platform that you used for your expo. Um, I think yeah. your expo is going to be along with one of your events coming up soon. Yes, it is called Easy Expo. Let me see if I can pull it up right now. Uh, I think it's Easy and then XPO. Uh, it costs us fifteen hundred dollars uh, to own the uh, you know our site, you know our own site. You know we're customizing it to our own. Uh, I'm sure you can do that too. And then the idea is that for that Women's Summit event that we're using it for the first time. Our I think we typically sell expo booths if we were in person for 400, we're going to sell them for the same price. Um, so we'll easily be able to uh, make up for, um, you know, the, the expenditure of the $1,500 for the technology. Uh, okay. I can try to get you, Susan, I can try to send more detail on uh, if there's a, a specific website for that. Easy yeah, that would be perfect. I can post the website. Sure. Um, a, a question about your directory. Um, how much staff time or how many staff members are required to make that directory happen? Um, I assume not just in terms of selling, but, you know, the um, preparing it in, in design and, and all that kind sure. of stuff. What sure, is that? Sure. Great question. No, and it's it's actually only three of us. So two of us sell it. Um, we sell it with what we do every day, talking to our members and 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 getting it out there. And then our, our communications director, who actually manages the um, the website, the the emails every week, and connections. She's the editor of connections. She's a graphic designer by trade. She's phenomenal. She lays it out. The key to that and the key to success there uh, is you have your directory, uh, I'm sorry, you have your database list of members, right? So that's key, making sure that that database is up to date. Once you pull that report in Excel and then, and then make sure all of the columns and everything is the way you want it, you mail merge it, it's done. Um, so we don't, we wait to pull that list to the very last day because what we tell members is if you join by the end of December, you'll be guaranteed to be listed. All members get listed in there. So we wait till the very end. We, we uh, finalize the Excel spreadsheet, making sure everything's grammatically correct. We mail merge it. It's in InDesign. And then, of course, she has to save room for the, um, for the ads. But, I mean, you know, I think maybe the first year we did it, 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 it might have taken her, you know, a weekend, right, to lay it out, which is why we said, you know what, it's worth $500. We, we actually pay our, our internal person $500 to do it. As a, I think if a printer laid it out for you, and, and we, 
you know, we've uh, contemplated this. Our printer said, yeah, we'll do it for you. And they would have charged us 500. And we said, we'd rather pay our own person. Let's, let's give them a little extra bump and let them, you know, um, help with this. And so, um, but the sales time, I think with two months, you could easily, you know, fill your book with ads. Uh, so two months sales time, and then, you know, maybe a week of like layout, edit, and all of that. Okay. Um, and I believe someone would wants to know if you're willing to share what the inside of your directory looks like, your member directory or printed newsletter. Is that digital on your website? So yes. we can probably share that pretty yes. easily. And I, I, am I, can you see, so like this is my book. Yeah. I have it here. Um, so, and it's just, I mean, it's pretty thick and it's you know full of members but you know there's ads on the inside front you know i have rc on the back i have capital blue cross inside front um this isn't so much digital on the website because again we have a, a business directory on our website that members can go to and, and so that's that but but um and the, the but the newsletter is digital and you'll if you go on our website you'll be able to page through it okay um, what what are the investment levels you've been able to obtain for your mission based councils? That's a very good question. I would say, you know, again, we'll work with with someone's budget on the DEI collaborative. That was a thirty thousand um, dollar request, and you know, nurturing of relationships and a total buy in of all of those diversity areas. Um, so that's been kind of the target there but I think on some of the other stuff like let's say someone really just supports women-owned businesses or someone really just supports um, the African-American uh, business leaders group um, you know those might look different based on you know how many events they do a year or based on you know just the overall support so I would say it could be anywhere from two thousand to ten thousand dollars on a, on an individual case-by-case -case basis Okay. Um, a question about your um, your tiered dues packages. Um, so, if your exec, the question is, if your executive package is fifteen hundred dollars, um, what does it look like when they want to renew? Um, for example, maybe they want a ribbon cutting when they join, but they might not need it for the following year. Is this a renewal challenge if those packages have to change from year to year? What do some of your other packages look like? Yeah, that's a very good question. I'll tell you what is a challenge is uh, keeping track of, you know, who gets what. And I'll tell you, our accounting team is top notch and they send us reminders every month. You have money here, you have money there, right? Because remember, this, it's this internal maze and everything has a line item, right? So membership gets credited, um, events gets credited, um, our, our website gets credited, everything has uh, its place. So that's a very good question. Ideally, we should be having those conversations before renewal time right and you should be checking in with those members as they go so you need to almost have your own plan of how you're going back to those members hey how are you how how did that ad work for you um you know after the ribbon cutting and and then you're right saying next year we don't need a ribbon cutting let's take that that value that credit and let's put it to something else so that's the thing we do a lot of credits right these credits are like future stuff and then it's like oh how am i going to remember i have a uh, I have an Excel spreadsheet full of credits that I'm responsible for them placing. And sometimes, you know, it, it, it can be hard to manage. But like I said, our accounting folks keep us in check. So um, so it's, it's yeah, having those conversations um, prior to us billing. But we will bill out the same amount. So like if someone renewed at, or I'm sorry, if someone joined at 1500, we will renew them at 1500 and then have to have that conversation. Now, the next tier for us is a $3,000 tier. but I've joined plenty of people at, you know, 2,500 or, you know, it just, it just depends on, on what they want because we customize everything here. Um, you know, our tiered structure is really a guide and it's to plant seeds, uh, to let people know what opportunities exist with our chamber, but um, we'll work with them on, on whatever they need. Okay. Um, what kind of investment is podcast equipment? How much? Yeah, that's a good question. I think for us, I mean, it was at least a thousand dollars. Um, and you know, we invested in this, and and that it's like two very good mic and sound system uh, equipment that we keep in the office. 
Um, I think, uh, you know, we invested in this prior to the pandemic. So we were like, you know, yeah, you know, on a, on a great roll. Sure, sure. Spend the money. Uh, the chairman of our, of our board really was pushing us to, you know, get this podcast off the ground and we were excited to do it. But, you know, if you don't have the right kind of equipment, you kind of feel like, well, if I can't do it well, you know, how, how are we going to make this work? So we finally launched it and then, you know, stopped interviewing people because, we're you know, we weren't in the office. And and uh, so I do think it has to be quality um, and which is now why, you know, again, as we're still not technically in the office full time as a full staff, but we repurpose a lot now for our podcast. And then you're still able to find sponsors for repurposed uh, folks. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, can you share some more information on the $30,000 commitment for the DEI Collaborative? Sure. Um, Why don't I find, let's go back to that one. I'm going to find, I know I have like, I did. <laughs> So let me, uh, let's go back to that one, if you don't mind. Okay. Do you want me to, uh, I can ask another question while. Yeah, that'd be great. Is that okay? Yeah, I'll find it in the meantime. Okay. Um, what software do you use for your virtual events? So we we invested in Zoom webinar and, and we've been using Zoom uh, webinar uh, for, for everything. Um, now, and you know, what we found too, uh, lately we've been doing a lot of pre-recorded events and then showcasing them on YouTube um, and, and, and having it pre-recorded. And then Becca Luderschmidt, who is our director of communications, she puts it all together. And like this morning we had a healthcare summit and we were able to, um to get that out there at 8 a.m this morning and it was all pre-recorded and ready to go we've done hybrid we've done where some of us are in person maybe if it's an awards program the awards people are in person at the podium everything else is you know streamed in on video um but otherwise uh zoom webinar is what we've been using so when you have people in person accepting awards and it's is it live streamed out to others yes. or recorded yes. okay yeah, so that award winner is able to be in person, accept their award, give their heartfelt, you know, thank yous, have their family and friends present. Um, you know, I think our occupancy limitations just went up, so we were able to have a little bit more people in, but we only allow the award winners to come in. Uh, right. And then those, and then our sponsors though can give us sponsor material that will that will um, you know be able to share with the award winners and their guests. And a uh, follow up on the on that for pre recording, do you use an outside vendor or is that recorded and edited by chamber staff? Chamber staff on the pre recorded, but I will tell you on some of those, you know, the more sophisticated events, we invest in an outside AV company. There's just no way that we can guarantee the success, you know, from a technical standpoint internally on some of this hybrid stuff like the couple of the debates we did they were live uh we did uh, you know we had the, the u.s uh senator with us and um those we always hire outside av now you know it's very expensive to hire outside av but we just make sure that you know we're doing it right and then we have sponsors to uh to cover to cover that and uh, support okay well gina i'll let you look for that information and um in the meantime I just wanted to share that on hybrid events, we had a terrific call yesterday, a roundtable call sponsored by our events division, and it was largely about hybrid events and some of the challenges involved in audiovisual um, issues and production and things like that. So if you want to take a look at that, um, I believe uh, Emily, who's on the line, may have posted it, and if so, maybe she can share a link. If not, uh, just take a look at our events division page and it will be there and then also don't forget that we have um, an events training conference coming up on november 5th and 6th we'll be dealing with all of these issues um, sponsorships um, creative sponsorships um, hybrid events fully virtual events award ceremonies summits um, the whole gamut so um, and also um, looking into the future, hopefully not too far future, when we can start to meet again in person. So um, take a look on our website for that. Um, so did you find what you needed, Tina? I did, I did. Okay. All right, I'll just, 
I'll just, uh, and I can share this document too with everyone after, but the DEI champion benefits, and this is with the $30,000 annual commitment, you're going to get a seat for your company representative to serve at the collaborative representing your commitment to DEI initiatives, sponsorship recognition listed with all DEI champions with all diversity council events, including collaborative events and individual diversity council events. So your sponsor logo is going to be anywhere that diversity events uh, happen. Um, you're gonna get sponsor recognition with uh, your DEI champion that includes your logo on all event marketing and eight tickets to events. Uh, and individual uh, upgrades, um, uh, you know, at, at, at events as well, you know, so if you needed uh, double that in tickets, we would certainly uh, honor that. You're going to get a press release naming all DEI champions with announcement of the collaborative. So the collaborative is going to be shared with media. Logo on our website for all Diversity Council pages recognizing your company as a DEI champion, uh, messaging throughout the year via social media, website, and in our newsletter with your company's DEI commitment. And then your company is going to be highlighted in the uh, monthly newsletter with our DEI member story. So we're going to highlight those DEI champions with their own member stories, maybe highlight some of those initiatives that they have at their uh, respective companies. Okay. Um Thank you, Gina. And uh, one final question on the DEI collaborative. Are others able to be lower level sponsors for the DEI or just the main sponsor? Yeah, I, absolutely. I think, you know, again, you know, we, we did our homework with regard to, um, you know, which companies were already supporting some of the diversity events we were doing in the past. And then we said, well, wait a minute, 2020 is going to look a whole lot different let's put this collaborative together and let's get folks on board with the mission of this particular group and have a seat at the table and have their finger on the pulse of 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 what's happening relative to dei so i think we would certainly entertain it as i said we're always flexible you know and i think in this case um we would certainly entertain it and um you know figure out you know kind of where they wanted to be positioned and and make it work okay well i think we are just at time folks so um Gina, thank you so much for being with us today and for all these great ideas and the energy and the enthusiasm and the entrepreneurial nature of uh, everything you're doing for your chamber and uh, and and really for us too, for the, your chamber peers. So really, really appreciate it. Um, and thank pleasure. you everyone. <laughs> thank you everyone for joining us. Um, I will have this recording up and posted on our ACCE webinar page. Uh, most likely by tomorrow, uh, certainly by Monday, and I'll include some of the resources that Gina has mentioned um, as well with that recording. And I think that is it. I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon, a great Friday tomorrow, and thank you for being with us. See you on the next ACCE webinar.